Hey there, everybody, and welcome back. For those of you that are interested in learning how to create a mobile application that displays user-specific data or hides data that shouldn't be seen by certain users, stay tuned. I'm going to be covering how to build a mobile app that does just that in today's video. So we're going to be using a free account on Firebase and AppGyver, which allows us to build these codeless applications or applications without code for free. Now, before we get started, if you like this content, don't forget to show support for the channel by liking and subscribing. And let's go ahead and jump straight in. So on the right, I am screen mirroring my phone with the AppGyver preview app pulled up. And now we're going to go through a very high level overview of how this application works. I only have a single page and I've set up four variables and I have one data variable. Now, if you have questions on how to create an app with a sign-in page, check out my series, which will be linked in the description, which is basically just how to create a social or sharing app for free. Once you have your sign-in page set up, you'll be able to more easily save the user data so that you can use the next few steps. And if you have any questions about how to set up your data resource, which I'll go over in a second, I have another video which I just uploaded, which is a new updated video on how to get this set up. Okay, so let's go through this high level overview. This application that I have set up is just a test app. It only has one page and all this page has, uh, basically it's going to be blank and it'll just show employee hours. There will be no text here and no picture here by default. So we'll publish a quick change just to show you what that looks like. So if I click save, when this app updates, you'll see that nothing is visible. So when an employee, in this case, the use case I'm considering is an employee that wants to see their hours. They'll just click show my hours and it'll say, Tyler, you worked 80 hours for the last two weeks and then has a little picture here. Now, what this is going to do is if, um, for example, I change the email address per employee or whatever the case may be, or this employee shouldn't access this page or this record, then I can change the email address. So in this case, the email is set to a at a.com. If I were to set this to b at a.com and save it, then what would happen is if the user clicks here, it'll say no record to display for this user, and then the image will be displayed. So <clears throat> going over the variables really quickly, I have four for this application. One called modified, one called my email, one called my email count, and one called saved data resource. So a quick breakdown before we jump into making this app. Modified is the final value that's going to be displayed here. My email is going to be the user's email address. My email count is going to be a count of the characters in the email address, because the way that this is going to be displayed is we're going to count the number of characters and then delete those and only have the remaining text. And then lastly, we have saved data resource where I'm pulling that resource to be an app variable that's local. That way we're not trying to modify the data on the back end. And then for our data resource, again, check out the link in the description below. But basically, I have a pretty basic resource. It's this collection with three fields, and we're only working with this first one. So I have my description, my name my resource URL and the other half of that URL. And I will actually paste this in the description if you need this part. And again, it'll be alongside that other video. So I've run the test. I see I get all the data. I've set the schema from response to make sure I'm pulling in the most updated content. And then I have added that data variable to this page. All right, now that we've done the high level overview, let's go ahead and build the app. First thing, you can drop your title in and call the app whatever you want it to be called. And then the next part, <clears throat> you need to drop in the text. And the text is basically whatever you want the application to display for that user or not. So when I dropped this text over, we'll check the content in a second. But first, it's just good to build out your, your application. And then you're going to need a button of some kind. So once you have these and whatever other UI components you need, we're going to walk through the logic that you need first. So when we click on page layout, you'll see we have show logic down here. When the page is mounted for this application, I've set the app variable, my email, 
And again, to find this component over here, you just drag over set app variable. And I'm setting my email to a at a.com. Now you don't need to do this exactly like this because you want this to be the user's credential. So in this case, you can put this function and attach it to the sign in button when the user signs in on their page or basically you can set this function up wherever in the app that you want to grab that user specific data every time they access the app and <clears throat> you're just going to store it locally. And then what we're going to do is set app variable my email count and I'll show you what this function looks like. It's very simple. It's just count the app variable. Basically, when you double click this count function, you'll get an overview of what it looks like over here. But the idea is we're simply counting the number of characters so that we can delete those first couple of characters. So that's what we're doing when the page loads. I haven't been able to get all of it to work on page load. It looks like there has to be almost like a sequence. So that's all we're doing on page load. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set this variable here. So you can select the text and then you can change the content to a formula. And if you need to access your app variables, you can delete all of the content up here and just click here and double click the app variable that you want to use. In my case, I'm calling it modified. And then you just click save. Now, as we scroll down, if you want to work with visible or invisible properties, you can do that here because you can actually install in this section here when you go to the marketplace, you can type in show or hide and then you can actually have functions that show or hide components. I don't like that just because it seems a little less secure. I don't really have a reasoning for that. It just kind of feels like it to me. It's I don't like knowing that the that something's technically there on the page, but the user can't see it. So <clears throat> I'm doing things a little bit differently. So now that we have this variable set here, we are going to go over to this button and we're going to set up the logic for this one. All right, so at this point, we can select this show my hours button and click the logic here and walk through what this looks like. So you'll see on the component tab, we're setting the app variable. And over here, we're clicking saved data resource as the variable we're setting. And then you can click the formula for assigned value. And what I'm doing is I'm assigning this value here. If you're struggling to find or understand this, you can go to your data variables. I recommend starting with one so that you better understand the breakdown. And then you're basically looking for the field for the string value that contains the information that you're looking for. Bearing in mind, if you change the information in the database, this part will not update until you go and set the schema from response in the previous steps that we did. So basically what you're looking for is if you notice this field one right here has these brackets, the one beneath is the string value itself and you'll just click save. So the first button is basically saving the variable, uh, the data resource to this variable. So it's stored locally. Then the next step here is an if condition. So for if conditions, you're basically just going to drag over this condition right here. And when you select it, you can select whatever option is right here. It's usually by default bound to static. We're going to go to formula. And here's what this formula is. We're going to use a contains statement. So if you ever have a question on how to use a statement, you can type the statement off to the side and it'll by default give you a quick summary of how this works. So what I did was I actually just copied one of these right into this text box up here and then just changed the values. Basically, you have value one here, value two here. So we'll break down what I did. For mine, if I double click, if you double click anything before the parentheses, it shows you what it is basically applying to. So if we click single click, sorry, string, it's converting this value to a string. Same thing with this one. And then when we click contains, it highlights everything. So what I've done here is I have contains and in the parentheses. So we have an open parentheses and a closing parentheses. The first item 
is this right here, and it's string and in parentheses app variable save data resource. So the first thing I'm doing is seeing if the entire value stored in Firebase contains this value here, and it's just separated by a comma and a space. And this is the app variable for my email. Once you have that saved, we have two output possibilities. So output possibility one is we're going to set the variable modified and we're going to choose the assigned value here. So we're using this left strip function. If you type this out, you'll see over here exactly how it works. If you were to type in this text and use four, it basically strips out four characters worth. So when we click on left strip, you'll see it pulls up everything. So the first variable is app variable save data resource. This is the master list basically of all the information. We're stripping this starting from the left by the count of my email. So if you remember earlier, the my email count app variable counts the number of characters. So in this case, if it's a at a.com, it counts that and then it just cuts off that value and only displays everything else. And then again, obviously this is in parentheses separated by a comma and a space. So that's the first one. And this is what happens if it's true. When it's false, this happens. We're gonna set the same modified variable, but in this case, we're going to assign it text and text is just in between double quotes. And it's just gonna say no record to display for this user. And then the last thing is I'm going to use the show component. I went to the marketplace and just searched for it and I was able to find it. And then it shows up and installed over here. And I have it set up to show image one. You'll notice the image is not displayed. So you can drag your image over. And then when you select it on this side, you can choose the image source, which I have a URL to this unsplashed image here and verify when you're saving and using images that you have the copyright, uh, basically that you have the rights to use them in whatever capacity you are. And in this case, uh, basically what I'm doing is in advanced properties, I set visible to false. This way, regardless of what happens when this button is clicked, this image is displayed. So now that we've set up this logic, you can save everything and we're going to go over here and test it out. So when we click show my hours, you'll see it says no record to display for this user. Now what we'll do is we're going to go over here and change the email to a at a.com and we'll click update. Now we'll click show my hours and now it says Tyler, you worked 80 hours for the last two weeks. So the idea here is anytime you want to change this, this information, you would just type in after the email, whatever value you want displayed. And it will not update in real time, so bear in mind if you do push out the wrong info, it will stay on the app until users close or hit this button again. But it shows whatever that value is. And this way, if you're displaying multiple fields or if this is only supposed to be visible for one person on a team, only the person with the correct email displayed will be able to see it. So an example of that is, I have b at a.com 80. If the user logs in, if at any point you need to have it set up differently, so if a user logged in with a different email address, then this variable would be set to something different. So in this case, it would be set to b at a.com. And if that is automatically saved, now they'll be able to access this data. So you have to be very careful when you're doing testing and again, follow any and all rules, laws, regulations for data handling and data privacy. I have not been able to figure out an easy way to get this set up for data variables or data resources in repeat, but this at the very least gives you the ability to choose who can see specific information, bearing in mind again that you're reading in my example to an open database and the down part or downside to this is is this is not very secure. So if you're using any sensitive information, this would not be a safe method for you to try. So feel free to play around with this. Again, if someone's able to dissect this or find these URLs in any method or pull the app on a computer or something like that, they'll have the ability to pull this data, uh, find out what these email addresses are. And, and there's just a lot more that they could do with it. So make sure that you're 
playing around with this to ensure that it meets your needs. I hope that helped. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.